This is a story all about how my life got twist turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there and I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Uh, in West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground, was where I spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, and relaxing, and all cool, and shooting some b-ball outside of the school when a couple of guys who were up to no good, um, they started making trouble in my neighborhood, and I got in a little fight, my mom got scared, she said, you're moving with your auntie and your uncle Bel Air. <laughs> going on there? Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I whistled for a cab, and when it came near, the license said, Place said fresh and they had a dice in the mirror. If anything else, I said this cab was rare, but I thought to myself, Yo, Holmes, the Bel Air. Uh, I pulled up to the house about seven or eight and yelled to the cab, Yo, Holmes, smell you later. I looked at the kingdom, kingdom and I was finally there to my, on my throne, the fresh prince of Bel Air. And if you could eat soup, eat it like that, I guess. I got what, two more slides? Okay. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I could have went with the extended version, but I didn't. But let me tell you that if you're going to build something with Kubernetes, <laughs> don't do that shit. Because um, you're going to wind up with a firewall that's blocking stuff. And then when you're actually trying to accomplish something, you're going to end up uh, on top of an elephant. <laughs> I guess using Postgres. Uh, <laughs> so if you feel like you need to keep your database relational, uh, get on that elephant, I guess. Peace. <laughs> All right, next up. <laughs> this is my team. Yeah. I run a small team. They're all very devoted. They will do anything for that yak. <laughs> sometimes it's hairy. Sometimes it's shaven. You know, there's, there's no planning here. It's just uh, we react to whatever happens to come to us. But it's, if a big bombshell happens to fall on your institution, um, I guess... Are those even bombs? I can't even tell what these are. <laughs> like the rest of what my team does. <laughs> but it's all right, because uh, we're, well, we're well prepared. If there's a flood, we're well above it. Uh, the water rises, we rise with it. Uh, they tell me what it is that I need to build, and I do my best to get a house like that, which is not always easy. Uh, but it often involves... <laughs> This is my don't bite my nails device. Uh, I'm often a little nervous about what it is that we're rolling into production, but uh, I'm told that it's all going to be fine and I should just take it easy, wait for the prompt to return the command. Uh, <laughs> I actually kind of feel this. This, uh, this is most of my life, is waiting for some primitive thing to actually return some result. Um, the other half of my life is building primitive things like this, <laughs> relying on the fact that they're going to carry me through the air without falling. Uh, actually, many of you that know me, and a significant number of people here do apparently know that I ride a unicycle, so that really is kind of me. <laughs> kids. How many here have kids? All right. Kids are great, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next slide, then. <laughs> Some, yeah, sometimes when you leave kids unattended, things like this happen. <laughs> this is not what you want to see when you're coming home from work, especially if you're in a sysadmin and that's what you see at work. And being a sysadmin is all about RTFM, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. It's all about reading the manual. Drop mic? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is a prime example of what my office looks like. It's books it's with more books, and um, that's pretty much all I do. And uh, also me looking back while everybody else is looking ahead. Um, in fact, that photo captures my uh, presence precisely, um, eyes and all. Uh, <laughs> and at the end of the day, I feel like I need to recombobulate myself back into a solid form because of all the work I do just kind of leaves me as like a jelly. So, um, yeah, big, big jellyfish. <laughs> all right. All right, so we're gonna talk about bringing new tools into your workplace. 
Uh, you might want to make sure you can fit into them, but you also want to make sure they're going to get their job done. And I can guarantee that's going to get a job done. <laughs> <laughs> As a Sabres fan, this hurts me deeply. Um, <laughs> but you also want to make sure you have a mascot for that job. And if you don't have one, be the mascot. You always want to be the one that says, we need this tool. Here's why. <laughs> and sometimes that job doesn't go so well. <laughs> Do not make Hal your mascot. He will not quite help you out in the end, because sometimes you need good requirements Pivot. Sometimes your tool produces too many results. Sometimes it's a little bit of overkill. But you've always got that one person on the side going, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and sometimes you're not quite trained to use the tool that you want. <laughs> so you just wander the streets, blatantly saying, look at my tool. It looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going to hide it up on this top shelf, <laughs> buried deep within a nested folder inside a nested folder inside a nested folder. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it takes to organize a DevOps days. First thing is there are a lot of dials you have to turn. It's a very complicated event, believe it or not, no matter how smoothly it looks, there's lots and lots that goes into organizing a DevOps days sometimes more than you might even imagine. There's the people behind the scenes that are doing the real work while the jackasses are up on the stage taking all the credit. <laughs> and, and it may seem like the, the people behind the scenes are working in these clean rooms and making everything run smoothly, but it doesn't really look like that. It looks a little more like this where they're trying to juggle sponsors on one hand, speakers on another, attendees on yet another, and all three of these want completely different things, and you cannot make all of them happy at the exact same time, yet somehow they do. But there's always the giant bear. There's always that big, complicated thing that happens at the very first thing at 7.30 in the morning on the first day. That giant problem that's coming in, and it looks really cute, but you know it's gonna bite your fucking hand off. <laughs> But you tame the problem. You bring the problem down to a manageable level. And then you can, you can actually do something about it. And you're ready to march forth and have the best event ever. I've got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Except, welcome to the number one raffle prize of the day. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone who participated. That was great. Woo!